Zank. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'nin ve dünyanın en iyilerinden University of Surrey'de eğitimi Emma'dan dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Emma, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Emma and I'm from the University of Surrey. This webinar will be recorded, so if you would like a copy after today's session um, or you have any friends who would be interested in hearing what I had to say today, then please do let us know and we'll be able to provide you with a recording. So I work for the University of Surrey. I'm going to talk you through uh, a little bit of an introduction to Surrey and what we have to offer you. And we will finish today with a question and answer session. So please do think of anything you would like to ask me um, and post it in the question box whilst you're listening to me talk. And I'll make sure that all of that uh, information has been covered and those questions answered by the end of today. So as a brief starting point, where is the University of Surrey? Well, we are in the southeast of England. We are half an hour from central London. So we are a campus based university, small to medium sized. So around 17,000 students in total. We have two main campuses here um, in the town of Guildford, which is quite a lively student town. Being a campus university, it's a little bit like living in a student village on a day-to-day -day basis. So everything you need uh, is on your doorstep. We're also very close to both Gatwick and Heathrow airports. So it's extremely easy, now the restrictions are lifting, to be able to travel to and from Turkey. So to give you an idea of what being at a campus university of uh, campus university is like it means everything you have and need is on your doorstep so within a few minutes walk of your accommodation you could be attending your classes you could be in the library and learning center um, going on a night out with friends at the students union relaxing by the lake attending clubs or societies training sessions and socials and going uh, on your daily basis, going to your classes, doing a little food shop, for example, all of that is within a few minutes walk. So I mentioned we had two campuses here at the University of Surrey. The picture I'd shown you beforehand is our main campus, Stag Hill, that has the majority of our academic buildings on it. Manor Park, the picture you see on the screen at the moment, is home to over 3,000 of our student accommodation rooms. So the majority of our accommodation is on this campus. It's also home to our veterinary school. The School of Health and Biomedical Sciences is next door to our Manor Park campus. And on this site, you'll also find Surrey Sports Park. So just to kind of summarize, in case you're getting a little confused by um, this mention of lots of different campuses. Our Stag Hill campus, again, the two pictures on your uh, left hand side of your screen, that's our main campus with the majority of our academic buildings, um, with our main academic and welfare support services. Um, it's about 10 minutes walk from the Guildford train station, apologies, and about 15 minutes walk from the center of town. There is, however, a bus route that goes all the way through from the Guildford town center, the town the University of Surrey is located in, all the way through to Manor Park, um, the center of your screen there. Manor Park is about a 15 to 20 minute walk from Stag Hill, but you could choose to cycle it in around 10 minutes or get the bus and that takes a similar amount of time. Then on your right hand side is a glimpse of Guildford. Um, so that's the town the university is located in. It's a an old market town historically. Um, so you'll have your cobbled streets and, and very stereotypical English architecture. There's a river that runs through 
uh, the town, the River Way, and you're surrounded by the Surrey Hills, which is an area of beautiful English countryside. So essentially there you have around 17,000 students, over 120 different languages spoken at the university, two main campuses and one big student community. So following on from having a quick look at uh, what the campus and the university looks like, what programmes do we actually have to offer you? So we have three main faculties at the University of Surrey. Firstly, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Now, um, common programmes that you'll hear in this faculty will be our business management programmes or economics. We have our Guildford School of Acting and we have our world famous School of Hospitality Events and Tourism Management also very well known for our music programmes um, and we offer a Law LLB too. Secondly, we have the Faculty of Engineering and Physical Sciences and this is home to around our seven engineering uh, streams including aerospace, aeronautical, um, we have civil and environmental, chemical and process engineering, uh, the electronic and electrical engineering departments, as well as mechanical. So we have a wide range of programmes there available to you, computer science and computer and internet engineering, um, also very popular. I just quickly want to highlight our physics department as well. We have about five different physics streams that you can choose to uh, participate with uh, here at the University of Surrey. So if you're interested in physics and in science, then our straight physics bachelor's degree may be of interest. But you may also be interested in um, in space, um, in kind of in AI, in robotics and other aspects of science and, and physics in particular. And we'd certainly recommend you have a look at those on our website. You may wish to study in our space centre, for example, on a day to day basis. So our third programme or our third faculty rather is our Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences. Now, our nutrition and food science programmes have won many awards across the UK. Our biosciences programmes are also very popular. We have biological science and also biomedical science. And we are one of eight schools across the UK to offer veterinary medicine. Now, I'll quickly highlight that programme in particular. As you may already know, applications for undergraduate students for September 2022 entry are already open in the UK, you submit those through UCAS. The veterinary medicine programmes uh, have an earlier deadline for applying than a lot of our other courses. So you need to have submitted your applications through UCAS by the 15th of October if veterinary medicine is a programme that you're interested in. Aside from that, we're first in the UK and 11th in the world for hospitality and leisure management. Uh, we're second in the UK for our nutrition and food science programmes. And many of these courses and bachelor's degrees and master's degrees offer teaching spaces such as our 5G or Future G Innovation Centre, the Surrey Space Centre that I've mentioned, and also our chemical processing plant right here on campus. Focus quickly on our Surrey Business School. We are currently eighth in the UK for business and economics and within the top 100 schools in the world for these subjects. So very much a school for you to consider uh, if your focus is on business management, business economics or something similar. So it's very much a global business school uh, with close to 50 different partner universities around the world. And this Surrey Business School certainly encourages you to take advantage of the opportunities to study abroad as well as going on our placement year. And I'll talk to you more about that shortly. 
So I mentioned that for hospitality and tourism management, we're currently top uh, in the UK for that, and also top 11 in the world. Now, these are some of the programmes that we offer within this department, as I wanted to give you uh, a chance to have a quick look through to see if one of these is something that grabs your attention. Also, a couple of quite new programmes to join the department uh, include international tourism management with transport. Obviously, that sector is going to face uh, a lot of new challenges post-COVID. Uh, and also our strategic hotel management master's programme is a relatively new addition. The second area, or third rather, uh, that I would like to highlight to you is our AI department um, and some of the programmes that we offer in this sector. So our artificial intelligence master's programme is actually the only one of its kind in the UK covering vision, speech, and 5G processing. Um, we've got two pioneering research centres that make up this department um, within the University of Surrey. Uh, we have a very well-known centre for vision, speech, and signal processing. Um, and also we have the Institute for Communication Systems, which you can see on your screen at the moment. So obviously at undergraduate level if if one of these programs on the screen now is of interest to you you'd probably be looking at uh, one of our physics um, related programs maybe chemistry or engineering at this point in time before progressing on to one of these master's programs at the end of your bachelor's degree so having had a look at some of the programs that we have to offer both undergraduate and postgraduate levels of study next i would like to show you just a rough idea of the type of entry requirements that we ask for so firstly we accept the uh, lycee or the anatolian diploma for direct entry onto a bachelor's degree now um, you'll see there we usually expect between 65 and 75% in your final year exams in order to qualify for um, our bachelor's degree programmes. One thing to keep in mind if you're interested in any of the sciences, then we usually do have subject requirements on top of the overall percentage. If for any reason you don't unfortunately meet those requirements, then we would encourage you to take part in our International Foundation Year, which is a fantastic pathway onto your bachelor's degree. And that again takes place right here on campus at the University of Surrey. Then if you have already completed a bachelor's degree and you're looking for a master's programme with us, you can see that in UK terms, we usually ask for between uh, a 2-2 or a 2-1 uh, honours degree. For um, the kind of Turkish GPA system, this is usually between 2.6 to 2.8 GPA in a relevant bachelor's degree. Those of you that are looking to move into a different direction with your master's programme, we'd always ask you to get in touch to confirm your eligibility for this course prior to applying. Now, English language requirements are something um, that me, you may already be very familiar with if you are a postgraduate student who potentially has already studied in the UK. Just to give you an idea here, um, we do obviously have our English language requirements, for example, IELTS, for each individual programme at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. If you've had a look at the entry requirements tab um, on the programme page on our website and you're worried that you don't quite meet the English language requirements for that course, please do not worry. We do offer pre-sessional English courses here at the university. Um, as you can see, between five to 12 weeks in length, and these are available if you haven't quite met the entry requirements, would rather not retake your English language test, but instead choose to come on a pre-sessional course. As a heads up, if you are looking for 
a master's entry in February 2022. Our pre-sessional English courses um, have already started. The 12-week course has already started. Eight and five-week programs start um, in the coming weeks and they are online. So there may be the opportunity to apply very quickly for these if you require it, um, but we'd encourage a prompt application there. So I mentioned um, that for master's students, for postgraduate students, and um, there is a February 22 entry point. Now these programs, I appreciate it's a lot of information on the screen right now, um, these programmes are the ones offering a February 22 start. Now, if you focus on the big, bold headings um, highlighted in gold, uh, then you'll hopefully find the subject area that you're interested in. And below that, you'll find the master's programmes that offer um, a February 22 entry. This isn't every master's programme here at the University of Surrey. Um, a full list is available on our website. Now, some quick updates for you and information that you may not already be aware of about the university, um, details that have come about and, and highlights that have come about in the last week or so. Firstly, we have just been awarded the accolade of University of the Year for Graduate Employment. So we're immensely proud of all of the work um, from teams across the university that has gone into obtaining this accolade. And essentially this means if you're looking for a UK university that is going to offer you the best possible chance at good employment once you graduate from us, uh, then we are the university for you and this accolade speaks for itself. Um, if you want secure employment, if you're looking for a good salary in work opportunities around the world with our many partners, then I would highly recommend you consider applying to the University of Surrey. Um, Quick autumn updates for you as well on this topic. Um, firstly, um, we are currently operating on a hybrid teaching model for semester one. Um, obviously, for those of you watching and listening today, um, that's not completely relevant to you. But I wanted to mention the hybrid teaching model in case it does continue for semester two. And so this would impact any interested February 22 applicants uh, watching at the moment. So a hybrid teaching model means that your lectures and written assessments take place online, but your classes, tutorials, seminars, workshops, all of those smaller teaching sessions take place in person on campus uh, with COVID secure uh, models and procedures in place. Uh, secondly, looking at the English language evidence um, tab on the right hand side. I have just mentioned obviously that we offer pre-sessional English but what you may also be pleased to know those of you looking to apply for February 2022 uh, is that we are accepting um, these online English language tests and I believe for September 22 as well. So for most of you watching today um, we should be accepting these programs um, and these English tests sorry for entry onto these courses. And these are usually the only online English language tests that we accept. So if you've got any questions about another test, just uh, get in touch with me after today and I will be able to look into that for you. Uh, so some more updates, um, especially for those of you looking to come to the UK for your bachelor's degree. We have some upcoming uh, undergraduate open days. These are virtual open days, so you can all uh, register to attend um, and you can see the dates on the screen at the moment. Now, a virtual open date means that it consists of lots of different webinars and interactive Q&A sessions, as well as some on-demand content that will be available to you um, on a special open days website. 
some of the webinars, they'll be subject specific. They'll be about accommodation, about finance, uh, student welfare and support, uh, clubs and societies. Everything you would want to know about your university will be included in these open days. So I'll put the link itself in the chat box at the end of this presentation, but I would highly recommend if you're free this weekend uh, to register for one of these webinars, these open days. Additionally, there is a later open day on the 27th of November. So please do get those dates in your diaries. Now, also we have a number of subject specific campus tours. Now, I appreciate for, for many of you, it won't be possible to travel just yet. However, if you are looking to come to the UK um, for a period of time to tour uh, and look around different universities, uh, then please do get in touch to see if your time in Surrey in and around Guildford will coincide with the relevant campus tour. So as well as um, being the number one university in the UK for graduate uh, employment, we are also number one in the UK and seventh in the world for our work placements and research partnerships with global employers. So that uh, kind of award and that recognition being top in the UK for our work placement program is another reason why you should consider applying to the University of Surrey. So one of the key factors behind this is actually our professional training placements. Now, a professional training placement is essentially a year of graduate level work experience that as an undergraduate student, you would complete between the second and final years of your bachelor's degree. So it's the option of applying for paid or unpaid work experience in some of the companies you can see on the screen at the moment, but essentially anywhere around the world. We have close to two and a half thousand industry partners globally um, for you to choose between and apply for opportunities with. So you'd apply um, as if you're applying for any other job, um, go through the application and interview process. But our careers team is here to support you um, should you need it with different workshops and training sessions um, to help you secure that opportunity. Now, you don't pay the full tuition fees um, for this year of placement work um, and hopefully you'll be successful in obtaining one of our paid placements. Now I know we currently have three uh, economic students currently earning 30,000 UK pounds for the year um, in their finance based placements taking place in London at the moment. So there are some incredible opportunities out there Obviously, those are the most competitive and you do want to be achieving close to a 2-1, uh, so a, a, an upper first um, or lower first bachelor's degree grade in your first year of your university degree in order to be able to apply for the best placements. Now, 40% of our undergraduate students come back from their placement year with a job offer. So that obviously impacts um, the award of being top in the UK for graduate employability because we are doing everything we can to ensure you're equipped to succeed once you leave us. So the placement uh, year is also open to a limited number of postgraduate programmes. Now I do need to highlight this is only for September entry points but these are some of the programs which are currently offering a September placement option. Now, what this means for those of you looking to apply for master's level um, programs is that you would complete your year of academic study. And then following this year of academic study, you would 
proceed to go on to your placement before returning um, to write your final report, um, summarising your experiences and project work whilst on your placement year. So I said that whilst you're going through the application process for this incredible opportunity, that you would be getting a lot of career support. Um, and you can see on the screen at the moment, uh, some of the different ways in which our careers team will help you find those placements and find employment uh, once you graduate from the University of Surrey. So annually, we host two large careers fairs um, designed to attract a wide range of employers offering different graduate roles and placement opportunities. Then throughout the year, we also have a number of small affairs, for example, focusing in law, nursing, internships, part time work, etc., giving you a chance to meet hiring managers and HR managers um, in person to network, to make a great first impression, all designed to help you get the best possible job and career once you leave. So whilst you're studying incredibly hard in order to get that 2-1 or upper first bachelor's degree or uh, merit or distinction in your master's degree, um, what does life at the university look like aside from your studies? Now, I'd mentioned we have um, our two main campuses. You can see Stag Hill and Manor Park there. We do also have a third site that solely offers accommodation. So we can guarantee you accommodation for the first year of your bachelor's degree and also your master's degree, as long as you meet the conditions in place there. We have over 6,000 student rooms here at the university um, across these three sites. There's campus security, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And there are seven different bands of accommodation that we offer at the university. Now they differ in terms of their size, the facilities, and of course the price. So I'd recommend visiting the accommodation section of our website, having a look at the different types of room we offer, and also the costs that they incur before potentially making your decision um, on what to apply for when the time comes. So as those six, uh, 6,000 rooms, over 50% have ensuite or private bathroom facilities. It is all uh, self-catered student accommodation. That's something important to highlight. So alongside um, supporting you academically, you'll get uh, offered a personal tutor uh, who you can meet with on a regular basis um, and your subject or programme society will also offer you opportunities for uh, personal development um, and support in your studies. We are also really focused and committed to supporting your wellbeing in general. Now, uh, the couple of things I'd like to highlight here um, include our Centre for Wellbeing. So this is physically located on our Stag Hill campus, um, but they also offer virtual appointments. This is a free service offering um, counselling services and support for a wide range of issues um, that you may um, already be experiencing or that may occur whilst you're at university and working incredibly hard. I spoke about the faculty support, but we do also have um, more general student services uh, centres and buildings on campus, including the My Surrey Hive. As well as security in your accommodation, we have residential support, so full-time staff available to assist with any queries um, or any issues you may be experiencing in accommodation. And we have a multi-faith chaplaincy um, 
that has a physical presence on our Stag Hill campus that can offer a, a kind of a listening ear, can help you find a place of worship, or can simply be someone to, um, to kind of ask questions of or, or discuss religious or, or faith-based questions. I had already said that uh, one of the ways in which you may find support academically is by joining your clubs and societies. Uh, now, clubs and societies at university are probably one of the best ways to integrate, to meet new people uh, from around the world and on different programmes in different student accommodation too. We would highly, highly recommend that when you do come to university, you join at least one or two clubs and societies, at least to begin with. So we have over 180 different clubs and societies. So that's around 50 different sports clubs and approximately 120 odd uh, different societies. These range from anime to mixed martial arts, to Bangra, to uh, video gaming, and on the sports side, um, we have kind of cricket, football teams, both men and women's, rugby, hockey, lacrosse, badminton, tennis, lots of different opportunities for you to get involved and meet new people. Now, during your first week at the university, you'll get the opportunity to go to a large fair, meet representatives from all of the different clubs and societies, and to sign up to try some new experiences here with us. On our Manor Park campus, so our, our kind of second main campus, you may have, uh, you may remember me mentioning that Manor Park is also home to the Surrey Sports Park. Now, this is a 36 million pound facility, which we're incredibly proud of. It was home to um, London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic countries um, whilst they were training prior to the games. Um, it's held several World Cups and is also home to um, premiership rugby and basketball teams here in the UK. So as students, you'd have access to all of the facilities, an Olympic sized swimming pool, climbing center, um, you'll have saunas and there are squash studios, badminton and tennis courts, a uh, basketball arena and so on. And outside you'll find a mixture of artificial and grass pitches as well. So a lot of different opportunities for you to get involved and to stay active. There are some great discounted membership rates for all of our students here, dependent on what you're interested in. And it's certainly something I'd encourage you to try um, if this is of interest to you. So we've had so far a very kind of whistle top a uh, 20 minute tour through the University of Surrey. We've talked about the fact that we're a campus university, the facilities we have here, the different programmes available, um, where we are ranked in the UK for graduate employment, uh, number one, and our graduates are uh, kind of twice the most highly rated as well. And we have also looked at kind of the support, both academic and welfare related, uh, as well as the incredible opportunities we offer from the professional training year, your placement year, to the um, Global Languages Award um, that allows you to learn and study and progress on a new language. We have about 13 available here at the University of Surrey, and that accolade goes on to your um, degree certificate should you choose to take up the opportunity at the end of your programme. 
We offer the career support we covered earlier to all of our students three years after you graduate. So you can constantly come back and speak to the team and ask for assistance as you begin to progress up the career ladder. And within that um, three years of support, support is available to you if you choose to apply for the graduate route visa, which is two years of a work visa after you either graduate from a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. And our international student support team can help in the practical application process while our career support team continues to help you strive for better opportunities in the workplace. So I appreciate I've um, probably spoken for about half an hour now. So I would like to come to a close in terms of me simply speaking to you. Um, and I'm going to ask for any questions um, that you may have. Uh, so if you could please think of any more questions, um, I will work through and, and answer them now. So if you think of anything, uh, please do place it in the chat. So first question, um, what is the international students uh, ratio in the university? So I mentioned that we had around 17,000 students at the University of Surrey. Around a third of those are considered overseas. And then just under a third, another third would be uh, considered European. So now that obviously that the UK um, has, has left the EU and um, everyone really becomes an overseas student if you're not from the UK. But essentially about a third of our students are considered international um, outside of Europe. And like I mentioned, we have around 120 different languages spoken here at Surrey. Um, mentioned, uh, someone's mentioned Ida about tuition fees for EU nationals. Um, so this is something um, that I can talk to you about on an individual basis, but essentially if you um, are living in Turkey at the moment or um, another country outside the EU, you would already be uh, an overseas or an international student in terms of tuition fees. So tuition fees are actually determined by your domicile, so where you're living, as opposed to your passport status. Now, there are sometimes uh, ways in which you qualify for a different fee status, dependent on um, where you're living, how long you've been living there and whether you have at any point lived or owned property in the UK. Um, but I think for the vast majority of you, you would be considered an international student. Uh, so next question, um, accommodation opportunities in Surrey outside of university dorms, are apartment rents affordable? So the, the kind of basic answer here for you, um, so you in this question, is that there are a whole range of accommodation options available to you to suit different budgets. So I mentioned that on campus we have around 6,000 rooms. Undergraduate and postgraduate flats are separate, uh, so you would be students with students studying at the same level for you. And the seven, seven different levels of accommodation we offer um, have different price brackets to suit different budgets. Now, outside of university accommodation, there are quite a few um, student blocks of accommodation run by private companies that are very similar to university residences but are just run separately from the university and have some great facilities. Now, they can vary in price depending on the size of room you're looking for um, and, and the different facilities they offer. There are also lots of different student houses and flats in and around Guildford, uh, which is 
that the town, the University of Surrey is located in. Um, now, many of our students come to us and, and live on campus for their first year to meet new people and then decide to live off campus in shared housing for the remainder of their studies. Uh, so there are lots of different options for you. We have an accommodation team to help answer questions on campus accommodation and university residences. And we also have a University of Surrey letting service, uh, which will answer questions and help you um, find accommodation off campus, should you like that support. Let me know if that doesn't answer your question and if, if you need any other information there. Um, I had a question from Semra asking, can we apply for more than one an undergraduate course? Now, this is a really good question. So thank you, Semra, for, for answer, asking that of me. When you're applying through UCAS, which is the University Colleges and Admissions Service, so UCAS is the UK process of applying online for university, um, you have, for most subject areas, up to five choices. So you can apply for up to five programmes in your UCAS application at undergraduate level. Now, when you're applying for those subjects, um, you may find two different programmes that you are interested in at one university. Now, it is, in theory, certainly okay for you to apply for more than one programme at the same university. But what I want to highlight to you is that when it comes to writing your personal statement, that personal statement is read by every university and by um, every admissions advisor, regardless of the programme um, you've applied for. So the same personal statement would have to be relevant for a law application as well as a business management program application if you applied for the two different subject areas in your UCAS application. So just something to be in mind, uh, to keep in mind there. Um, you can apply for up to five undergraduate courses, the exception being veterinary medicine at Surrey, um, through your UCAS application. But just be aware that your personal statement um, is read by each of the different universities' admissions team. So you don't want to mention a particular university or programme by name if you're applying for different courses there. Um, and whilst I'm, I'm on this topic, for master's students, you don't apply through UCAS, you apply directly to the University of Surrey through the programme page on our website. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so uh, we have a question on uh, career opportunities for international students after graduation in England. Now, hopefully the last couple of slides uh, that I mentioned um, previously um, you know, answer this question for you. Um, I can go back to them now. Uh, so we are firstly now number one in the UK for graduate employability, which I hope gives you some security and faith in the University of Surrey in supporting you here. Um, we offer you career support for three years after you graduate um, and the graduate uh, route visa is a visa that you can apply for um, that gives you two years work eligibility in the UK after graduation. So you could remain here for up to two years um, on the graduate route visa as long as you find employment within um, the required time. And that's something that our careers team can help you with. So those opportunities are available to international students as much as they are to UK students. Um, I have a question on our, all of our master's programmes, um, one year long in duration. The answer is 
Yes, um, in the vast majority of cases, most of our master's programmes are one year of academic study in length. Now, some programmes in September offer you the opportunity to do a placement year. Um, and so that would double the length of your programme to a two year study and work period. Um, but essentially for most programmes, yes, it is one year at master's level. Uh, Ida, you've asked uh, another question. Thank you on the two years work permit. Um, and hopefully I've answered that question just now. Um, yes, uh, if you graduate from us, you can receive support in applying for the graduate root visa, which is that two year uh, window to gain employment um, and to work, sorry, within the UK after you've graduated from your programme. And Sida, another question on our pre-masters programme. Um, I didn't actually go into too much detail about that, did I? So thank you for mentioning it as a question. Um, we do offer a pre-masters programme. Um, it's run at our International Study Centre, as is our uh, International Foundation Year. Uh, and yes, um, if you have a slightly lower GPA, um, often the pre-master's course can help you there. At the same time, if you have a slightly lower GPA from your bachelor's degree, but you have some great, really relevant work experience, then you can use your work experience to help with your application. OK, I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes or a minute even to see if anyone else has any other questions. Uh, please do put those into the chat now um, and I'll make sure I answer them um, for you. Otherwise, um, for those of you listening today in the chat box, I'm just going to put my email address for you all. Uh, so please do feel free to drop me a line uh, with any questions uh, you have after today. And I think that is it for me. So um, if anyone doesn't have any other questions, I think I've answered everybody. Um, then Zainab, I will... Um, I will pass back to you. Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation, Emma. We believe it was a really informative webinar for the attendees. And you covered the, all of the questions. Thank you for your answers, too. It was another great session. Thank you. Thank you for your, your support today. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. University of Surrey ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için Emma'nın paylaşmış olduğu mail adresinden ulaşabilirsiniz. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again Emma. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you so much everybody. Enjoy your evenings. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.